Hi there, welcome back to my channel. I am so glad to see you. I'm going to adjust the camera so I can talk to you properly. So I'm in my studio and I am doing a collaboration with Sharon Lindley from Vivid Days. And what our theme is, we're doing a spring summer theme and our guidelines are they're going to include blue pink and red and some bling it's going to be wall art and have some kind of texture in it um, so what i've decided to do and i've got some illustrations to kind of explain what i'm going to do um, i've always thought japanese prints were interesting so i've got a couple of examples to sort of explain what i'm going to do so this is like a typical kind of japanese print and so is this they're quite simple in their backgrounds and typically they have like a blue or a beige or black um, peachy colors um i'm thinking for the bark of the tree i think i'm going to do a blue background and my canvas is and i haven't painted on a canvas for ages so i'm quite excited about it i'm going to um use this this is a 30 by 24 i haven't decided if it's going to be portrait or landscape um and as you know i'm mainly a resin artist so there probably will be some resin involved. Um, not sure where the bling is going to go yet. Um, but I think for the bark, like the bark of the tree, I think I'm going to use some molding paste to make it really like very textured. And I'm thinking of creating the flowers out of resin. Um, anyway, this is my thoughts right now i will put my thinking cap on and we'll start this project tomorrow so fingers crossed and i will be able to produce something as great as sharon's i'm going to leave a link to her channel and her video um, below in the description box and if you haven't checked out her channel you definitely should. She does fantastic art. I love her. She's such a sweetheart. Um, she lives in England and definitely visit her channel because she's an amazing painter. Anyway, let's see how I can get on and create something that represents something like this. So I'm mixing my blues. I'm just going to move my camera up and in this one, I have mixed, I put um, some Floetrol in the bottom. I'm going to have one quite dark blue and I have some ultramar Ultramarine and some Phthalo blue. So this is going to be the darker one and some Prussian blue. So the phthalo blue and the Prussian blue are both transparent colors. So they won't take over that much. And the canvas is quite big, so I'm gonna need a fair amount. Let me add some more ultramarine. And now I'm going to make a very, still going to be a cool blue, but it's going to be much lighter. And this is going to have some violet in it. So remember I said to you how um, simple the Japanese paintings and ultimately they really became prints are. And I'm using the violet to bring it the brightness. Oh, I haven't used this in a while, obviously. And 
and so let me finish this i'll get my canvas and we'll get painting okay so i'm hoping this camera angle is going to work for you let me just take my spoons out of my paint receptacles because they're just going to get in my way this is lemonade by the way all right and I'm just going to use the one brush and I'm going to start just anywhere So I'm going to leave that as it is. And the reason I like to use the roller, it gives it like a really kind of smooth blending. And you'll see a very subtle um, light coming from this corner. So this is going to be my top. This is basically how I make my flowers. My resin mixed. I'm going to make my flowers just pink and blue. And I have here a board with just some plastic on it. I've got some Bombay ink. This is red violet, but you just put a drop in it and it goes pink and some turquoise if I can open it oh why can't I open that oh let me get some paper towel it's probably got resin on the lid just a drop in there I don't want it too dark And stir these up so it's a lovely soft pink. And I haven't decided what the red aspect is going to be yet. I think what I'm going to do is I've got some. Um, you know, acrylic kind of diamonds. And I think I'm going to coat them in red tinted resin and have kind of like chunky, shiny resin berries between my flowers. I told you it would be kind of sculptural resin okay so then what i basically do is um move that out of the way um it's quite simple i just pour this on the plastic i'm 
like this. And the magic really happens over the next few days. And then I have some clear leftover that I like to just kind of mix and make the colors a little more translucent. And then I've got my spreader because the petals have to be thin. Otherwise it's hard to manipulate them into the shapes I want. So, that is the basis of my flowers. And once that's dry tomorrow, you will see this blob being transformed. This has dried. So I just peel it off the plastic. And it's nice and thin. And you can see it's nice and flexible. Don't worry about the wrinkles. And I'm going to get rid of the plastic. Um, now what I do is I bought these scissors from the hardware store and they're really, really strong. And if you leave this too long, it just gets too hard and you can't cut it. So I cut out petals like this. And I think, so my, each flower is going to have five petals. And I've got these little bands from, you know, the drugstore. And what I do is I fold my petals up like this. And that's why the wrinkles don't matter. It kind of adds more. To the, and you know, if you get nice flat surface, all the better, but it doesn't matter. And then I get my band and I wrap it round. In a couple of places. And then I will leave that to dry for um, several days till it's completely hard. So that's one, like I said, each flower. I've got some pink in the middle and some blue. So they've completely dried. As you can see, they are rock hard. And I made some more. I've got some smaller ones. I think I'm going to have these at like the bottom of the canvas. Um, oh, that one's got some weird flashing on it that you can see how hard they are. Look like fallen petals. So you take off the bands and my first step, or my next step, is to hot glue them together in whatever formation I want. And I did make some other colours as well, just to change it up a bit. So, I kind of like this colour though, maybe another blue one. This one, I like the transparency on that one. All right, let's take the bands off. Um, I think I'm going to have to 
cut the band off. But you can see how great they keep their shape. All right. So hot gluing them together is just to keep them in the shape that you want. Here's my hot gun, is it ready? Yep. My glue stick. Don't worry about the hot glue, you won't even see that. That's all gonna be covered up with resin and bling. And each flower is going to have five petals. Lastly, I think I have another blue one. There. The resin petals are all hardened and um, you've hot glued them together. So they're in the formation that you want them in and you've mixed your resin and we have our oh let me try to unscrew our glitter glass and now all that needs to be done is you just need to pour some resin over the center of each one and you don't need to be neat and tidy over it because the petals are made of resin so if it dribbles down that's just Fine. Then we get our glitter glass and we just sprinkle that on. And I've got this sitting on wax paper, by the way. So um, by spreading, you know, this is one I made earlier and um, you can see the resin dripped down the petals. Um, it's very, very sturdy. Um, when I place it on the painting, I'm going to use um, molding paste that I will color with acrylic paint and use that to hold these flowers in place. You can see how this is filling up. See how this is filling up? I'm going to show you how I tidy up the flowers. So you get some flashing, which, you know, it's, it's actually fairly flexible. Like some you can actually pull off, but what I do, there's either two ways to do it. Um, if you own a, a wood burning tool, this is a great way to do it because you can use this attachment and it just is like a hot X-Acto knife and you can just slice off 
um, the excess resin really, really easily and quickly. Um, but if you don't have that on hand, you can see how fast that comes off. Um, see? And not everyone has one of those. Then the other thing you can do is take a X-Acto knife or um, a craft knife. And then I'm just going to adjust the camera. Yes, if you had a candle lit, you could just heat the blade in the candle flame. Let me bring you back down. And there. So that's why I like my nice peaceful hot tool. Much easier to use and much less aggressive. No, I'm giving you a top, top um, camera view on this. So the blue background is dry. I added a second coat with um, a more lighter background. And um, today we're gonna add the molding paste. And first of all, I'm kind of going to plan out what I'm going to do. And I wish I could turn the canvas the right way. Um, unfortunately, I have packed away my easel because we are trying to declutter and um, trying to find a new studio because we'll be moving eventually. So I'm just going to use this string to kind of plan out where I want my branches to come in. And so you know I'm going to have one, one to come in sort of here and hang down. And then a shorter one. My scissors are so blunt. So maybe that one can stop start in the top corner. And then another one to come in here. And then just a smaller one to come off this one. This is just to kind of give me a kind of rough idea of what I'm doing. And then the flowers will press into the molding paste. This will probably go there as it's the smallest flower. And I think I have enough flowers. Oh yeah, I've got plenty. Plenty. I think I need one at the end. I want to have a spare, so I could always add another one here. Um, and then I have, actually I've got some more drying, but I'll do something else with those. And then I'm going to have some petals, you know, randomly fallen at the bottom. And just some small ones. Um, so this is going to be the top. And the other thing, we were taking the dogs for a walk the other day. We found these flat pieces of bark and I might press some of the bark into the molding paste as well. Just a few random pieces to make it look um, more realistic. Anyway, so without further ado, I'm going to mix my molding paste and I'll show you how to do that. This. this is a really light molding paste and it dries 
really, really nicely. Oh yeah, I've got plenty of that. That's the one I'm going to use. And I was thinking of possibly putting this in an icing bag. We shall see. So that probably is good enough for the first branch. And then the colours I'm going to um, use with this, because I don't want it to be like really dark, like um, a burnt umber. So I'm going to lighten it with a natural grey. Anyway, we're going to start with some natural grey first. See, to me, that's more of a tree colour anyway. And just mix this in. And this is Amsterdam acrylic, and this one is completely opaque. So that's good. And then I'm going to add the teeniest, teeniest bit of burnt on there. I mean, like a smidge, like a rabbit dropping size. Just to begin with, see what difference that makes. See, it's warmed it up quite a bit. I like that colour. See, if you look the piece of bark I've got, you can see how similar it is. And it doesn't have to be mixed all neat and tidy because, you know, you want it kind of speckled. Right, I'm going to see if I can find a an icing bag. And by golly, I found one. So I need to, I guess I need to put you back up again. I hope the whole canvas is in the frame and I'm just going to cut a tiny, tiny hole. And then I can squeeze all of this paste down to the bottom and I'm hoping I've got enough in this bag. So I said I was going to start in the corner and my branch is going to come down like this. Now what I'm going to do is start adding the flowers and to do that I'm just going to literally squeeze it into the moulding paste and it will dry into the moulding paste. I've mixed up just a little bit of moulding paste with some green acrylic paint, a couple of different colours, and I'm using my smallest pointed um, palette knife. And they're going to be tiny little leaves. Just 
just very, very subtle. Just to add a bit of interest. the little ones and these I'm just going to stick on with some um, E6 I think that's too big E6000 glue so I think that's enough I've got the four little fallen petals Right. see you tomorrow with the red bits. Now for the red part of my painting. I have three Japanese symbols here, which I've researched on the internet. And I've copied them down, drawn them in pen, drawn the outlines, and I'm gonna paint them in red. They mean peace, love, and health. It's finished. I'm going to bring you in for a close-up. And we have the flowers. You can see some detail. And the branches with the natural bark. And the bling. And I've got some hanging off the edges, which I wanted to do. So I hope you like my contemporary Japanese floral. And there's my piece love and happiness and I'm going to take this outside actually so you can see really see the bling in the sunlight here it is in the sunshine all the bling sparkling hope you can see that anyway this will be on my Etsy store Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Peace, love and health to you all. Bye.